Downton Abbey, Sherlock Holmes, Jekyll and Hyde. The Victorian era continues to capture the popular imagination as a time of class, style and top hats. But it turns out that the elegant, refined people driving their carriages through London's fog-filled cobblestone streets were a pretty creepy and morbid bunch. From posing with corpses to grinding up mummies for paint, today on Nutty History, we're covering the creepiest things that were normal in the Victorian era. Her Majesty Victoria, Queen of the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Ireland, Defender of the Faith, Empress of India. These titles belong to Queen Victoria from 1837 until her death in 1901. She ruled for 64 years, longer than any monarch who came before her. Victoria's reign was a time of immense progress and innovation in science, medicine, legal reforms, literature and popular culture. In many ways, the modern world began to take shape during this time. But because there were so many new inventions and developments, things we take for granted now took some pretty weird forms at first. For example, one of the exciting new developments of the Victorian era was the newfangled science of photography. Getting your photograph taken started out as an expensive luxury, but as the art proliferated it became cheaper, much cheaper than having your portrait painted. As photography became more common, people would very naturally take pictures of all the corpses they could find. Wait, what? Yep, Victorian corpse photography was a thing. Though it seems gruesome now, they'd prop the corpses up on stands and pose them like they were still alive, sometimes even painting eyes on their eyelids for… uh… realism. And then they'd photograph these bodies, often with their living family members standing around them. Hey, we all grieve differently. Why did they do this? Well, at the time, disease was still a huge issue. There were epidemics of typhoid, diphtheria, cholera, you name it, and many families tragically lost children before they could be photographed. Plus, poorer people might not want to splurge on a picture until after it became clear they would never have another chance to get a likeness of their family member. Death was everywhere in the Victorian era, and they were used to it. Speaking of dead things, wouldn't they make for a great holiday card? While season's greetings in the mail today often feature family photos, Christmas trees or snowy winter landscapes, festive cards from the Victorian era included dead birds, clowns, boiled children, murderous frogs, the devil, horror movie snowmen and humans with vegetable bodies. Was everyone at Victorian era Christmas having a bad acid trip? Christmas really started taking off as a holiday in the Victorian era. In 1843, Charles Dickens published A Christmas Carol, which, upon further reflection, is a pretty creepy story, and that same year the first Christmas card was created. As literacy rates increased and postage rates decreased, mailing Christmas cards started to become the phenomenon it is today. Based on the threatening imagery, it might seem like the goal was to terrify your mailing list for the entire holiday season, but these cards were actually thought of more as conversation-provoking works of art and were often related to folklore and superstitions of the era. Take the devil, for instance, who's a frequent fixture of Victorian-era Christmas cards. According to English legend, the devil would actually team up with Santa Claus, kidnapping the naughty kids and beating them with a stick. Uh, I'll take the lump of coal, thanks. Even Santa was a pretty big creep in the Victorian era. Aside from hiring Satan himself, he's depicted as a peeping Tom who spies on kids through their windows and even stuffs them in his toy bag. Abducting children is definitely not in the holiday spirit. Of course, maybe death would have been less of a theme of the Victorian era if these guys would stop eating arsenic. Folks in the Victorian era put arsenic in everything medications for reduced libido, wallpaper, toys, fabrics, even beauty products. Victorian beauty standards favoured women with deathly pale skin, and arsenic can cause pigment loss. You could go down to the store and buy a product called Dr Rose's Arsenic Complexion Wafers. They were exactly what they sounded like, little crunchy wafers filled with arsenic for people to nibble on, hoping to get that fresh corpse pallor. Yum! The wafers were advertised as perfectly harmless. They also used to bathe in the stuff, Check out our Beauty in the Victorian era for more on that and other disturbing beauty rituals. Anyway, arsenic, we shouldn't need to tell you, is not perfectly harmless. Arsenic trioxide is a metallic compound that is extremely toxic. It can be tolerated by the human body in very small amounts, 
but long-term exposure causes liver and kidney damage, hair loss, conjunctivitis, vitiligo, and of course, eventually, death. To make matters worse, if you start to build a tolerance, it becomes addictive. It's not like people didn't know the stuff was bad news. The first major use of arsenic was as a rat poison, and there were a whole bunch of arsenic poisoning murders throughout the 19th century. But apparently people thought it was worth it for that Edward Cullen glow. The weird obsession of Victorians with death and dying extended to those who had died thousands of years ago. There was a huge fad for the style and culture of ancient Egypt, another time period known for its intense death rituals. Victorians loved appropriating Egyptian artefacts, copying Egyptian architecture, and painting with Egyptian mummies. Yup, they would grind up Egyptian mummies to make paint pigments, specifically the aptly named Mummy Brown. Victorians loved mummies. The well-to-do would host fancy cocktail parties where a mummy's bandages were unwrapped, and the Victorian art scene mashed up mummy remains for paint. It was supposed to be a particularly good colour for painting tones on human faces, the practice eventually died, not because it was gross and disrespectful and weird, but because they were running low on mummies. There are, after all, only so many dead Egyptians, and museums were becoming stricter, wanting all the best mummies for display. Demand for mummy brown outstripped supply, and some less picky artists dug up the bodies of recently dead criminals to grind up, trying to duplicate the colour. Luckily, the practice of making mummy paint ended in the 20th century. You might still find a tube of a colour called mummy brown at the art supply store, but nowadays it's made from synthetic pigments. This is probably for the best, as it means fewer ancient curses being unleashed by freshman art students. The Victorian era was a strange time, full of innovation, but still very repressed, scientifically advancing, but still surrounded by preventable death and disease. An exploding population that was fixated on its own mortality, in many ways, the technological advancements and cultural shifts of that time are mirrored by the ways the world is changing now. Of course, we're not obsessed with images and memories, right? We don't willingly put poison in our bodies just because we think it makes us look cool. Right? Guys? Let us know in the comments, along with what creepy historical norms you'd like to hear about next.